Hey, you okay? Hang in there, my husband. John became unconscious in the bathroom while bathing with our daughter. This sudden incident had me in a panic. No matter how many times I called out, there was no response from him. I'm going to call an ambulance right now. Seeing John collapsed in front of me, I was shaken, and my hands trembled as I tried to dial for help on my phone. The worst possible scenarios kept flashing through my mind. Taking a deep breath, I was about to make the call when my daughter said something shocking. We should just leave him. Who cares? Let's get a divorce already, she said. What are you saying at a time like this? I couldn't believe she was joking at such a critical moment and suggesting a divorce. What was she thinking? Even though she was my daughter, I was so upset that I raised my voice at her. But she looked so serious, it didn't seem like a joke at all. Could she actually be serious? Divorce? Why would you say something like that? Well, you see, her words sent chills down my spine. I never imagined there could be such a reason. She looked me straight in the eyes and said again, Got it? Let's get out of here quickly. Silently, I nodded and hurried out of the house with her. My name is Karen, 35 years old. Currently, I work part-time in the mornings at a local pharmacy. Ah, you're back. You must be tired, Mom. Welcome home. It was a day off, and I had left the kids with John. When I got home, the two of them greeted me with smiles. I met John, a pharmacist, back in high school, and we reconnected at a reunion, which led to us dating. After three years together, we got married. He works hard, often staying late at work, especially since we had our daughter. But he always prioritizes us, no matter how tired he is. I'm constantly grateful for him. Lily, were you a good girl and listened to your dad? Yes, our daughter Lily just started first grade this year. Her constant cheerfulness lifts my spirits and I forget all my troubles when I'm with her. How about we make your favorite hamburgers for dinner tonight? Really? Yay, Dad, did you hear? We're having hamburgers tonight. Watching her overjoyed reaction, I began to prepare dinner with a smile. However, within an hour, I started feeling increasingly unwell. Uh-oh, I've got a headache. Having been frail since I was young, I often fell ill. While enduring the pain in the kitchen, John noticed and came to my aid. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Even if you say so, you look pale. Maybe you should rest. Maybe, but Lily was looking forward to dinner. No need to push yourself today. You can make it tomorrow, right? John suggested that, and despite feeling sorry for my daughter, I decided to take a rest. Lily, sorry. I'll make it tomorrow. Mom, are you okay? Lily can wait until tomorrow. No problem. Oh, that's right. As I was about to return to my room, Lily seemed to remember something and hurriedly went to John. I wondered what she was up to when she came back to me. She had medicine and a glass of water in her hand. This is Dad's magic medicine. Take this and get better. Thank you. With this, I should be better by tomorrow. I was so grateful to have a pharmacist husband. At that moment, he always prepares various medicines for me, knowing my frail health. Surrounded by my kind husband and daughter, I felt so blessed. With these thoughts, I drifted off to sleep. The next morning when I woke up, my headache was gone and I felt completely well. Going to the living room from my bedroom, I found that John and Lily were already up. Ah, oh, Mom, you're feeling better. Thanks to Lily, I'm all better. As I chatted with my daughter, John, wearing an apron, brought breakfast. Your color looks good. Seems you're okay, but you have the day off, right? Rest for the day, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. I'll take it easy. All right, then. I'm off to work soon. John took off his apron and headed to the entrance. Lily and I followed to see him off. Dad, have a good day at work. Sure, I'll do my best. After this exchange, we bid John goodbye as he left for work. I felt so lucky to have such a wonderful husband. I thought about how our happy life would continue like this. I was lost in these thoughts, basking in the contentment of my life. But at that moment, I had no idea that this happiness was about to be abruptly shattered. Thirty minutes later, after dropping Lily off at school, I returned home and was relaxing in the living room watching TV. I had no work today, so I decided to take it easy, as John had suggested. I felt a bit guilty about yesterday, having caused trouble for both of them. I let Lily down, too. Suddenly I thought about how I was always troubling John and Lily and decided to make a slightly more lavish dinner as a token of my gratitude. I started preparing dinner for midday but got a bit carried away, making enough food to look like it was someone's birthday party. Oops, I might have overdone it a bit. With these thoughts, I continued preparing dinner and then went to pick up Lily and returned home. The moment she entered the house, she started shouting joyfully, The food smells amazing! What's for dinner today? 
Lily burst into the living room, tossed her backpack aside, and scurried towards the kitchen. Today I made the hamburgers I couldn't make yesterday and Dad's favorite fried chicken. Wow, yes. She must have been really looking forward to it. Watching her jump around with joy, I couldn't help but smile. With Lily's help, we finished preparing dinner. Let's eat when Dad comes back. I decided to wait for John's return with Lily. Lily, too, was eagerly awaiting her dad, but even at the time he usually returns, John hadn't come home. Dad's late, isn't he? Yeah, I'm hungry. Eat first. No, I want to eat with Dad, Lily said, looking down. What could have happened to John? He's usually home by now. The clock had already passed 8 p.m. I felt bad making Lily wait any longer. Just as I was about to message John that we'd eat first, I received a message from him. A junior at work is really struggling with something. I've decided to have dinner with him and listen to his problems, so I'll be home late. Sorry, he could have told me earlier. Although I was internally upset about the sudden change, John has always been kind to everyone. He probably couldn't ignore his junior's troubles. Lily, Dad's going to be late today, so let's eat first. Really? Okay, when I told Lily about John's late return, she looked quite sad, but it couldn't be helped. If we kept waiting for John, who knows when we'd eat. After finishing dinner with Lily and putting her to bed, it was almost midnight. I'm home. That's when John quietly came back. Try not to make much noise. He didn't seem to have been drinking. Welcome back. How is your junior? Ah, uh, well, he's okay for now, but I've decided to help him with work for a while, so I might be coming home late every day. At the entrance, John said that he already has a lot of overtime and comes home late, and now it's going to be even later. I understand that his junior is important, but I wish he could come home earlier for us. I wanted to say this to him, but he's working hard to support me and Lily, so I couldn't say anything more. So today, Lily was trying hard to wait to eat dinner with you, but it's work. Can't be helped. Is that so? I'm sorry. How about this Sunday? I'm off work, and we could go to the amusement park as a family for a change. I think Lily would love that. I'll tell her tomorrow. Oh, here, let me take your jacket. Ah, uh, thanks. I just wanted to jump into the bath quickly. I'll go take a shower now. The moment I took his jacket, I smelled a scent that was unfamiliar to me. This smell... It was like a woman's perfume. I never wear perfume. For a moment, I doubted John, but then thought it might be my imagination and didn't think more of it. And then on Saturday tomorrow, we're going to the amusement park, right? Yeah, are you excited? Yes, excited to play with Dad. Then let's go to bed early today so we can enjoy tomorrow, okay? Okay, okay. After that heartwarming conversation, Lily and I saw John off after he left. While relaxing in the living room, I suddenly remembered that we might be running out of groceries. I had used a lot this week, so we needed to restock. Since there wasn't much else to do that day, I decided to go grocery shopping with Lily. As I browsed the store looking for any special deals, I was approached by Mrs. Johnson, a mother of one of Lily's classmates. Oh, isn't that Karen? Long time no see. Ah, yes, it's been a while. After a brief greeting, we started chatting, but after a while, I heard something shocking from her. Mrs. Johnson looked around nervously, then leaned in and whispered, I don't know if this is appropriate to say in a supermarket, but isn't your husband working with a young woman? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything like that. I hope it was just my mistake. But I saw them the other day. Saw what? I couldn't believe what Mrs. Johnson was saying, but having heard she saw it with her own eyes, I couldn't help but be concerned. When I asked, she continued slowly. I saw them coming out of a cafe near the station, arm in arm. No, not my husband. He wouldn't do something like that. I was stunned. My mind went blank. It must be a mistake. Yes, it has to be. I kept denying Mrs. Johnson's words in my head over and over. Karen, are you okay? Ah, uh, yes, I'm fine. It must be a mistake, Mrs. Johnson. You're funny. Yeah, your husband wouldn't do such a thing. He seems so honest. Sorry for saying something so strange. Don't worry about it. See you. We parted ways there. I continued shopping with Lily and went home, but my memory was hazy. No matter how much I tried to convince myself that my husband wouldn't do such a thing, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Back home, I was struck with a headache from the shock of possibly being cheated on and the belief that he wouldn't do such a thing. Mom, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Sorry. If Dad were here, he could give you some medicine. Why don't you rest until he comes back? I decided to take advantage of my daughter's kindness and let myself rest for a while. I get sick so easily over little things. I really hate being so frail. I was thinking about this, but before I knew it, I had fallen asleep. When I woke up next, there was a nice smell in the air. 
Oh, you're up. I was greeted by my husband who noticed I had woken up. It seems he made dinner for me instead. Huh, weren't you supposed to work late today? Lily called me. She said Karen wasn't feeling well, so I hurried back. I see, I'm sorry, that's obvious, right? We're family after all, my husband said. Indeed, a family man like him would never betray us. Having experienced his kindness anew, I was convinced that what Mrs. Johnson said earlier was a lie. Mom, are you feeling better now? Yeah, thank you. I'm fine now. By the way, about tomorrow, I was thinking of canceling our trip to the amusement park after talking with Lily. Really? But Lily was looking forward to it so much. It's okay, Mom. Take your time to rest instead. I was thinking maybe we could go to the park tomorrow, so that's what it was. I'm sure my daughter must have been really wanting to go to the amusement park, but I couldn't waste her kindness, so I decided to take it easy tomorrow as well. Here, eat this. I mixed in some supplements to make the symptoms a bit milder, so I think it'll help you feel better, my husband said as he served the stir-fried vegetables. When I tried a bite, it was a bit bitter, but not so much that it was hard to eat. Thank you, but I'm not really in the mood to eat much right now, so I'll just eat what I can. All right, well, it won't spoil right away. So if you can't finish it, eat it tomorrow, my husband said before heading to the bathroom. Then I couldn't finish all the food and ended up leaving about half, which I put in the refrigerator. He had said it was okay to eat it tomorrow, so I thought I would do just that. With that in mind, I also took a bath and headed to the bedroom. A few hours later, what? What's this? Such a headache. I was suddenly struck with an unprecedented headache, followed by a severe wave of nausea. Unable to hold it in, I rushed to the toilet and managed to get through it. But what could have been the cause? Today, everyone ate the same things, yet there was no sign that my husband or daughter had woken up. Oh, wait, I remembered. My husband said he had added supplements while serving me dinner. It was probably some kind of side effect. But being a pharmacist, he wouldn't use anything that could have a serious impact on the body. It must have just been something that didn't agree with me. After spending some time in the toilet and vomiting until my stomach was empty, the nausea completely subsided. The next day, feeling completely better, I decided to make lunch for the two of them, who were planning to go to the park. I remembered there were leftovers from yesterday. Even though I felt it would be rude not to eat what he had prepared, I was scared to eat it because of what happened last night. So I decided to put the leftovers in the lunch boxes for my husband and daughter. Good morning. Good morning. As I was making lunch, my husband and daughter woke up. After serving them breakfast, I handed them each their lunch. Here, take this with you. Eat it for lunch, okay? Thanks for making it. We'll be off then, they said and left for the park. They would probably be back by evening. I wasn't feeling bad anymore, but there wasn't much to do. After a light cleaning of the room, I went back to the bedroom and fell asleep. A few hours later. When I woke up, it was already late afternoon. It was about time to get up. With that thought, I went to the living room where my husband and daughter had already returned. Welcome back. How was it? I asked Lily, but she didn't seem very responsive. What could have happened? She was so looking forward to going out with her dad. Karen, you put that stir-fry in the lunch, right? Maybe she didn't like that. You know, Lily doesn't like vegetables, my husband said. Indeed, Lily had only taken one bite of the stir-fry at dinner last night. Feeling sorry for leaving it out, I had included it. But maybe that was a mistake. Lily, I'm sorry, okay? You don't like vegetables, right? I apologized to my daughter, but she just shook her head and didn't say anything. Hmm. I wonder what's upsetting her. Without knowing the cause, there's nothing I can do, I figured. Her mood would improve if I left her alone for a while. Thinking this, I decided to start preparing dinner and headed to the kitchen. Thirty minutes later, crash! A loud noise suddenly came from the bathroom. It wasn't the sound of something being dropped, but something bigger, unlike anything I'd heard before. What happened? I quickly turned off the stove and rushed to the bathroom. Opening the door, I saw my husband lying on the floor, completely limp. You okay? Hang in there! I was in a panic over the sudden turn of events. No matter how much I called or shook him, my husband didn't respond. I'm calling an ambulance right now. While I was trembling and trying to pull out my phone, thoughts of the worst possible scenarios flooded my mind. I took a deep breath to calm down and was about to dial when my daughter said something shocking. It doesn't matter about him. Let's just get a divorce quickly. What are you talking about at a time like this? I couldn't believe she was joking about something like this, especially not about divorce. 
Frustrated, I raised my voice slightly at her, but Lily wasn't joking. Her face was deadly serious. Divorce? Why would you say that? Well, Dad, he's been friendly with some woman I don't know. She came to the park today. She told me, from now on, call me Mom. That means Dad's doing something bad, right? That's why God was watching, Lily said. I was chilled by her words. I couldn't believe such a reason existed. Lily looked me straight in the eyes and added, And I also heard them talking about how Mom is in the way and how to get rid of her. If what Lily was saying was true, then my husband was having an affair. What Mrs. Johnson had said was true, and that perfume smell on his jacket. Realizing everything, I wanted to leave right away, as Lily suggested. But I couldn't just leave my husband lying there, got it? So, let's leave quickly. Okay, understood. We'll leave. Just Lily and me. But first, I'll call an ambulance. The ambulance arrived in about 15 minutes. As they loaded my husband onto the stretcher and into the ambulance, the paramedics asked if I wanted to accompany him. I declined, saying I would go separately because of Lily. But honestly, I didn't even want to go to the hospital. I couldn't believe my husband was having an affair. I hadn't seen it myself, but Lily was so certain. It must be true. All the kindness he showed to me and Lily. Was it just to avoid suspicion? The realization that I had been deceived filled me with anger. How could he? Feelings of deep resentment I'd never felt before towards my husband surged within me. Without a word, Lily and I left the house. We got into the car and drove aimlessly with no particular destination in mind. Mom, about Dad, it's hard on Lily, but right now I don't even want to think about someone like him pretending not to hear. I chose to ignore the topic. It's unbelievable what he did in front of such a young child, especially his own. Remembering the happy times with my husband and daughter, tears naturally started to flow. I wish he hadn't been so kind, as these thoughts crossed my mind. About an hour into our drive, my phone rang. It was an unfamiliar number, but I pulled over and answered the call casually. Hello, who's this? Is this Mrs. John's wife? I'm the doctor who treated Mr. John after he was brought in. Oh yes, that's me. Honestly, I didn't care much about what had happened to my husband. As long as he was alive, that was enough for me. But then the doctor asked me to come to the hospital. Could you please come to the hospital? There's something about your husband that we need to discuss. Uh, if he's alive, that's fine with me. I don't want anything to do with him anymore. Well, there's a matter of potential criminal involvement in this case. Criminal involvement, what does that mean? Confused, I followed the doctor's request and drove to the hospital where my husband was taken. Upon arriving, I left Lily outside the consultation room and went in alone to meet the doctor. I'm sorry for the trouble. It's fine. So what's going on? We found poison in your husband's system. Poison? Yes. What does your husband do for a living? He's a pharmacist. I see, the doctor sighed deeply. I didn't quite understand, but according to the doctor, pharmacists can handle poisons under certain circumstances. Do you know what your husband ate recently? Or if anyone in the family experienced something similar? A few days ago, I ate a vegetable stir-fry and suddenly felt ill at night. My husband probably ate the same thing for lunch today. It's likely that then the poison was probably in that dish. I shuddered at the doctor's words. If this was true, my husband had deliberately poisoned me with clear intent to harm. It'll make you feel better because it has supplements in it, he had lied. After the conversation with the doctor, Lily and I went to my husband's hospital room. He had regained consciousness, apparently having been saved by stomach pumping. Ah, uh, Karen, sorry for collapsing suddenly, my husband apologized in a weak voice, but his words no longer had any effect on me. He was probably just frustrated that his attempt had failed. I simply said, too bad for you, huh? Even in the face of everything, it seemed my husband was still intent on playing innocent. His face bore an expression of faint ignorance, as if to say, I don't know anything. I couldn't stay in the same room with him and keep my composure. I left the house keys on his bedside table and left the hospital. Lily and I decided to return to my parents' home for the time being. Thinking about the possibility of something happening to Lily, I realized I just couldn't stay in that house anymore. About a week later, my husband called. He hadn't taken his cell phone to the hospital due to the emergency. I'm fine now. Sorry to worry you. Are you at your parents' house? Yes, you can come back any time, he sounded the same as ever, asking us to return. I couldn't tell what was real and what was in act anymore. I couldn't trust anything about him now. I decided it was time to confront him. All right, we'll come over now. Okay, I'll be waiting. After hanging up, I told Lily, hey, this might be the last time we see Dad. Is that okay? 
Yeah, Dad did something bad. Lily seemed quite angry at her father, too. Resolved, I took Lily and headed to the house where my husband was waiting. Welcome back, I missed you. My husband greeted us with a smile, but Lily and I were distinctly cold in response. Lily even went as far as to say, don't touch me. Hey, what's wrong? Why are you so mad? He joked as he headed towards the living room. We followed him sitting on the living room sofa. I went straight to the point and asked him bluntly, are you having an affair, huh? Me? That's a harsh joke, he deflected, trying to change the subject. But Lily was direct, Dad. Who was that woman you looked so happy talking to in the park? The one who told me to call her mom? Ah, that woman is... He was visibly shaken by Lily's question, blinking rapidly and avoiding eye contact. That's just a friend, a friend of mine. Do you really think such a childish excuse will work? Since when does a friend ask someone's child to call her mom, especially knowing you're married? That's... Well, he was truly foolish to think such an excuse would work. I had been taken for a fool. He looked down, silent for a while. I thought he might finally admit it, but then I realized he was using the opportunity to sneakily use his phone under the table. What are you doing? Do you think you can make a fool of me? Anger erupted inside me, and I raised my voice as I snatched his phone away. Hey, what are you doing? Give it back! My husband's phone displayed messages from a woman who appeared to be his mistress. In such a tense situation, I couldn't believe what he was doing. Despite my disbelief, I checked the messages and found something shocking. I tried to get rid of her today, but it didn't work. If I keep it up for a few more days, it'll surely work. She's frail and will definitely just take whatever I say and keep taking it. Really? Won't she eventually catch on? Your wife is such a fool, Lowell. I'm praying that you become my husband soon. The messages were filled with even more embarrassing content. It really was my husband's doing. Hmm. So the mistress is named Ashley, huh? And you were trying to get rid of me, huh? No, that's not. What do you mean, not? It's all here in the messages. It's your fault. Now that everything was out in the open, my husband, with nothing left to lose, glared at me with a rage I had never seen before. I'm tired of having to take care of Lily and do everything because of your frailty. So... He had finally shown his true colors. It was all about him, not caring about anyone else. Was it really so hard for him to take care of Lily, our daughter? If that's how you felt, you should have just asked for a divorce. I couldn't just say that. Why not? You're just worried about how it looks to others, right? If I happened to disappear because of the poison you prepared, everyone would just pity you, but now it's backfired on you. What do you mean? You ate the lunch I brought, right? Yeah, that was the leftovers of what you made for me. Hearing this, my husband's face turned even redder. Don't mess with me. You made me eat that, and I ended up unconscious. The joke was on him. If he hadn't made that dish in the first place, none of this would have happened. No, you made it, remember? Anyway, it doesn't matter now. As you wished, I'll divorce you. Just sign the divorce papers. I said this as I handed him the divorce papers. I had picked them up from the office while I was at my parents' house. Ha, ah, I'm not getting a divorce at this point. What are you even talking about? We can't just continue like this. What about Lily? When my husband said this, Lily ran toward him, then suddenly asterisk, smack asterisk. Lily's powerful slap hit my husband's cheek. I hate you, Dad. I never want to see you again, crying, Lily shouted at her father. Even my husband was visibly shaken, holding his slapped cheek in disbelief. Now you see, right? Lily doesn't consider you her father anymore. This is all your own doing. Realizing he had no ground left to stand on, my husband quietly signed the divorce papers. That's it then. Go on, leave. No, there's still something left to do, I said, picking up my husband's phone to call Ashley, his mistress. Assuming it was my husband calling, she answered in a good mood. Hey, what's up? I'm John's wife. Ashley's voice turned ice cold in an instant. It's not surprising, given that she suddenly received a call from the wife of the man she's having an affair with. It seems you've been involved in quite a scheme with my husband. You do realize that's a serious crime, right? No, I mean, I wonder how many years you'll end up spending in prison. That'll be interesting to see. When I mentioned prison, Ashley began to panic. Please, anything but that. So what's your plan? If it's a settlement, I'll pay whatever amount you ask for. Just please, not the police. She seemed desperate to avoid arrest, her voice quivering. But I wasn't going to let her off that easily. She needed to face the consequences of her actions. Whether I'll settle for a payment will be decided later. For now, live with the fear of what might happen. Wait. I cut off the call before Ashley could say more. 
My husband, who had heard the entire conversation, realized he might be next. His face turned pale, his usual confidence completely gone. You heard what they did, right? I could go to the police right now. But what will you do? Just please spare me that for now. I'll have my lawyer contact you about the details. Of course, you'll be covering the legal fees. That's okay, right? Uh, okay, I understand. So, that day, I left my husband and returned to my parents' house. The next day, I immediately hired a lawyer and officially demanded alimony from both my husband and Ashley. I wasn't going to let this end easily. I also requested that a certified mail be sent to both my husband's and Ashley's workplaces, explaining their actions. A week passed, and by now, the lawyer's mail must have reached their offices. Honestly, I could have reported them to the police, but this way, they were socially obliterated. My ex-husband, having consumed the poison himself, was part of his own downfall. I refrained from reporting to avoid any suspicion on myself. I never imagined that man could be such a despicable person. I hope he lives his life full of regrets from now on. A month later, the full amount of the alimony I demanded was deposited into my account, completely severing my ties with my ex-husband. Still, I couldn't help but worry about Lily. Regardless of what he did, he was her only father. Do you ever want to see your dad? Not right now, but maybe someday. It's natural for her to feel that way. Despite everything, she was very attached to him and must be feeling lonely. I decided to respect her wishes. If she ever wants to meet him again, as for my ex-husband, I found out through a message that he had to borrow money to pay the alimony. He also left his job because the affair became known at his workplace, and now he's juggling day and night shifts to pay off his debt. Ashley, it seems, didn't stay with him after the incident, and now reportedly works at a bar at the edge of town. Both of them are living the consequences of their actions, and I feel like I've gotten my revenge. Of course, I have no intention of forgiving them. My focus now is solely on Lily and improving my health. I'm planning to start exercising to improve my health even just a little bit given my frail condition.